Hello and welcome back to my garden here on another beautiful sunny day in Northumberland. And because we're outdoors on location, you're going to get lots of background sound, like I can just hear a tractor there now. But what I'm going to do for this one is that little view there. That probably doesn't look that inspiring to you, but it's amazing what you can make out of nothing really. And the worst bit of any painting, I, or I always think anyway, is that a plain white piece of paper glaring at you. So now let's fill it with something. And not a lot of drawing in this one. In fact, really, if I were by myself, I probably wouldn't do any drawing whatsoever. But then you wouldn't see what I've got in mind or how I'm going to shape this picture. A little bit coming up here. And then we've got lots of distant tree, middle distant trees there. I've got a heap, <laughs> a heap, that's a country term. That's where all my old Christmas trees and everything go. If you haven't got roots on, got one there. And now I've got some big trees coming up here. I'm not going to fiddle about with the top of these trees too much because I'm going to put some foliage on them. There isn't that much foliage on there at the moment. They come out a little bit later on, but I'm going to put more than there is. There's one. And we've got another one a little bit closer there for the base here, look is a little bit lower than that one. And I've actually got two tree trunks coming out of one base there. Look. Listen to the birds, they're going mad. It's always like that here. It's not because we're on lockdown and there's no people. There's always very few people in Northumberland. And take those up there like so. And the canopy of that, I'm gonna do in full foliage. So really, have a bit of grass there, sorry, grass. And I've got some hedge here as well. And basically that's just going to be a picture made up of lots of different greens. Tree trunk there. Which will go up into that foliage there. And a little bit of distance there as well. That's it. That's my drawing done. We do lots of online sales and people think that we must be quite a, a big company and we're not, it's just my house. And so all of you people that buy online and you think about the warehouse that all this stuff is coming from, well the warehouse is directly behind you. There. <laughs> it's time for the sky, a very simple sky. There aren't really any clouds there. And as you can see from the drawing, if you think about all the foliage I'm gonna have up here, there's not gonna be that much sky showing apart from through the trees. So I'm gonna have a very simple, just a very simple wash. There's water to start with, just water. Whack it on with my one and a half inch flat wash brush. Don't worry about trees, go through them. Remember, if you've got trees in full foliage, don't start wetting around them like so, go through. Because when you leave gaps in the foliage, you need to see sky colour showing through, not big clumps of white paper. Just ultramarine blue here. On the top, a bit more. From the top, coming all the way down. Getting weaker as it comes further down. 
In posh circles, that's known as a graduated wash. What it means is it gets weaker as it comes further down. Again, wash out, squeeze out, mop up. Sky done. It is as easy as that. Just leave it. Hello, Berkey. Oh, good boy. You know what to do now, don't you? When you're on the camera. Oh, don't burn. That's disgusting. Clever boy. Go down. Down. Good boy. The sky is all nice and dried now, so I'm going straight in with the trees. <laughs> That's all there is, really. Uh, all dried there. And I'm changing to my number eight round brush. Remember, the last one I used for the sky was my big one and a half inch flat brush. Aquafine, Dale Rowney Aquafine. Lovely brushes. Now I've changed to my number eight round. I'm starting off with a little bit of yellow ochre. Plenty of water into this. Like so. And all I'm doing, kind of like, get to the top of the trees there. A few bits there. And I've gone around those tree trunks. Now, hooker's green and a little bit of light red. Hooker's green and light red mixed. With the hooker's green, you can get so many different mixes, so many different greens. This is my hooker's green and light red. There you go. And hooker's green just saves so many problems that people have about mixing greens. You can have them all with one tube. Two bits there. And in between. Listen to the birds, they're going mad today. A few bits down there. And again, coming up here. And again, like I say, hooker's green and light red. And I'm just stippling. Dib dab dob. But hello. down behind the heap. <laughs> the heap, remember that. Mm -hmm. I'm humming, it's a dangerous thing to do. Now, just blue, ultramarine blue, the same blue as your sky. Put it out there. Now, if I'd left gaps in the bottom and you put the blue on, then it will come out just blue. But putting it on top of the green, like so, just adds more depth to that green. And that's all done whilst the first green is still wet. That way the colours merge in together, seep together and give you a softness to it all. I love it when it's all wet like that and just goes into each other. But now look how that really frames this tree that I'm going to put in front of it all. Shall I have a little bit of light red by itself? Yes, I will. Remember, light red is not a red made lighter. It's a colour called light red. It's actually more akin to burnt sienna, but it's a bit softer. There, quite like that now. And again, soften my brush a little bit. Clean, damp brush, soften the colours in. So, so simple. Just let the water do it. There. Ding dong! Now, I've changed my rigger brush, number four rigger brush. Again, aquafine and a little bit of yellow ochre. There. And I'm just going to drop that in to this left hand side of those trees, that tree there.
and a few little twigs. I'm not very mad with them. Now, raw umber mixed with a bit of blue. There's my raw umber. Tiny touch of blue. There, that darkens it a little bit more. And everything's drying fairly quickly today because the sun is so warm on my back and on the paper, obviously. Two minutes here. So, so easy. Now for the foliage on that one, you would think I would use a small brush at this stage, but no. I've got a hooker's green, I've got my three quarter inch aquafine brush, hooker's green, and a lot of yellow ochre there. See? A little bit of water into that. Now split my brush and just stipple on. And again, stick up. You can see now what I'm talking about with the sky wash. If I'd gone around that tree with my sky wash, I'd have big clumps of white paper showing there. Instead, you're seeing sky colours for it. Much better. Now, a little bit of blue, just a little mean blue. And again, split my brush. Finally, in that one, just tap it with my finger, merging the colours a little bit. That's known as digital art. <laughs> oh, I amuse myself. There, one tree done. Now, with that same three-quarter inch brush that I've just knocked hell out of, splitting it for there, uh, it's gone back to shape, and now I've got yellow ochre. And for the heap there, like I say, there's all kinds of stuff on that heap. It's not a compost heap, it's like a, an old Christmas tree heap and a various cuttings heap. A little bit of yellow ochre, a little bit of burnt sienna. Who touches that? And a little bit of black, a little bit of raw umber. Raw umber by itself. And coming out of there with my rigger brush, I've got some sticky bits. <laughs> sticky bits, which means sticks, twigs. Little bits and pieces coming out of there. A few bits of Maria. There we go. And a few bits at the base. And again, tap on. A bit of digital art. Excuse me. Easy peasy. Now I'm going to go in with a little bit of background foliage behind those big trees. And again, it's with my big brush. Stippling on there, look. There's the yellow ochre. In fact, I'm going to put all of this lot on now. Now, hooker's green and yellow ochre. Various greens going on here, look. A bit of hooker's green and yellow ochre. If you remember, in the distance I used hooker's green and light red. I've used hooker's green and yellow ochre. Again, I'm using hooker's green and yellow ochre, but a little bit lighter. 
and more yellow oak ridge work. Mix and match. Now, Hooker's Green and Burnt Sienna. Quite a bit of Burnt Sienna into there. Water and again, tap on. Side of the brush, remember the red wine stroke. The hand shakes more readily if, you have, if you've had red wine, <laughs> which I always have. Now, ultramarine blue. Nice and dark and rich down the bottom there, look. Just tapping on. Now, what about the light on those big trees, I hear you ask. Sorry, I hear you ask. But even if you didn't, this is how I'm going to do those. Back of my fingernail. Just scraping. Now, once that lot behind is dry, I can paint those in where I want colour. They have dried. I'm going to go in here with a few bits of twigs in amongst that dark stuff. And that, that mix, is raw umber with a touch of blue into it. And we'll have a few bits down there. And now, I will leave that to dry. Now that was, all that's nice and dried, I'm going to paint the tree trunks of these big ones in. And I'm using my rigger brush again. But a new use for Charles Evans sand. In there with those. Look at that. It is such a useful colour, the sand colour. Charles Evans sand. Painting a few twigs. I've had this colour on the go for poor, probably 15 years or so by now. And I'm continuously finding different uses for it. I haven't just made this one up by the way, I've used this before. But there's always, when you're practicing with this colour, there's always new uses for it. They aren't as thick as they're going to be. I'm going to have a dark side to those yet. But I'm just getting the light side in first. Or with my rigger brush. That one there is the one that I've got 
kind of two tree trunks coming out of one there. of the colour. Now to get in there with some darker stuff. And for the darker side of them, I'm going to use raw umber with quite a bit of ultramarine blue into it. That makes a lovely dark, strong sepia. See that? A bit of water. Now I'm going in here with that to the right hand side of where I've just put the sand. You notice I haven't come above the tree line behind it so far. I shall do that in a minute with an even darker mix. This is the, of course, the Corona Lockdown. That's why I'm painting in my garden. For those of you that are watching this video a few years from when it was made. Um, and I spend my life on the road. I'm always in hotels and doing shows all over, all over the country. Well, all over Europe, really. Um, but it's amazing how quickly you adapt to just being at home. And all the years that I've lived in this house, I've never ever stood in my own back garden and painted. And it is so refreshing. <laughs> With the dogs popping around, bird song, a bit of sun on your back. Well, I say the dogs, Frank's indoors, just because he's a grumpy old man. Now, this mix is ultramarine blue and burnt sienna, just about black. And that's to the extreme right-hand side of all these tree trunks. Whilst I'm just happily painting away, um, I'll answer a couple of queries, <coughs> excuse me, because I get lots of feedback from YouTube and most of it favourable. <laughs> We're going to get the odd whinging person that likes to whinge about anything, but by and large, all favourable. And I get lots of requests. It'd be really nice if you could paint this in a YouTube video. Um, Yes, you come up with some good ideas, um, and I've had all kinds of ideas. But what, what I have to think about when I'm making the YouTube videos is things that will appeal to most people, not niche things. Now you'll see I've come above the parapet, so to speak. This is where the twigs are going in above that tree line behind. I'm doing that with the darker mix, the ultramarine blue and the burnt sienna. There. 
that's all my three trunks in and twigs and everything. So now, once that's dried a little bit, it's time for the foliage in that. Now it's time for a load of foliage on top of the big trees. And still, even though these are closer up, a bit more distinct, I'm still not painting individual leaves. And in actual fact, there isn't that much foliage on those yet. I'm gonna put more on than there is. So, yellow ochre, side of my big wash brush, look, my three quarter inch flat wash brush. Dib dab. Now, hooker's green and yellow ochre. I know the colours of these trees when they do come out. And it's a lighter foliage. So hooker's green and yellow ochre. Plenty of yellow ochre in there. And again, with the side of the wash brush, tapping. The red wine stroke. And a few bits here. Actually, they don't show that much there. They do go with blue. Corner of the brush look. All with a big brush, three quarter inch brush. Now, a little bit of blue. Actually, no. A little bit of hooker's green and burnt sienna first, but a lot of burnt sienna into it. A little bit of water. Look, it's just a darker version on top. Here and there. Now that shows a bit better. Now a little bit of blue. And again, just ultramarine blue. Same blue as his sky. And I don't want too much of that. Now just with a clean damp brush. The same motion, just tapping on and softening the colour in a little bit to the greens. And that'll do nicely. And the next thing to do is the grass, sorry, the grass. Now it's time for some grassy bits. So I'm starting off with hooker's green and yellow ochre, and I've got some rough grasses at the base of the trees first, and around the edges of the field. A lot of yellow ochre into there. Plenty of water there. I'm just going to fill these in a little bit with the corner of my big brush. Carefully around that tree there. and just move this around a bit underneath the hump in between that or with that lovely big brush now you can't really see it at the moment because Colin my gardener hasn't been for a couple of days, hence the field's full of daisies. But when it's cut, it's got those lines on, 
you know what I mean. Um, those strips that you see on a lawn when it's been cut. I'll show you how to do those, it's very, very simple. I'm starting off with a little bit of yellow ochre and plenty of water into it, but yellow ochre by itself. And for more kind of like lawn rather than rough grass, put a yellow ochre in there. Now, hooker's green and a lot of yellow ochre. up into the yellow ochre but leaving some other yellow ochre showing through look. now to get those lines on a lawn just get rid of that bit there that's drying there running to get those lines on a lawn just with the big brush look Sucking paint out. And a little bit more of that. Now softening it in at the base, at the top, sorry. Now I shall let that lot dry before we go in for final shadows, which is the bit that really makes any painting. Now it's time for the final shadows. But before I go any further, I've just been told by the camera person, Gail, she that shall be obeyed, is that I didn't tell you, when I was sucking out there, it was just a clean damp brush. There was no paint on it, just sucking paint out. There. How's that? Now, ultramarine blue, alizarin crimson, and burnt sienna, three colour mix. Kind of like a dark aubergine colour there, look. Just more blue, that's better. There. See, and that's what I'm going to use for my shadow. There is a warmth to it, it's dark, but there's a warmth to it because of the alizarin crimson. I'm starting off again with my three quarter inch flat brush. Starting off with a little bit from here. The shadow, breaking it slightly, look. And a little bit up into there. And then I shall have some from these big ones here. Going up slightly into there and from there. And again, break that shadow slightly, dappled rather than solid. accentuates those tree trunks. Sounds like I did that on purpose. That was a happy accident. <laughs> I sound like Bob Ross, happy accident. Now, a little bit of shadow from something here to the left, something, a tree cast over to the left there, casting shadow, which is not here, by the way. I'm just adding that. I say, hello. What a difference that makes. Just soften that at the edge a little bit there. Better. And there we are. Another very simple little painting of my garden, or a part of my garden. I'll keep finding out more bits as we go along and make more out here, as long as the weather holds that. Is. Um, you don't need to fill about too much, as you've seen. I've used very few brushes on that one. Well, I've used four, um, some of them more than the other, especially the three quarter inch flat wash brush, which is so, so useful. All of those tips and techniques with trees, especially, are all in this one, this book, the Charles Evans Pocket Book for Watercolor Artists. Lots and lots of tips and techniques in there. And there's everything, there's stage by stage. It's only a little book and it's crammed full of stuff. 
stage by stage projects, even horses. Um, all the colour mixers, the ways to do the drawings, everything. It's all in that little book. Such a useful little book. And there's a very slightly more useful view of me as well. Gosh, I hadn't realised I was in there. <laughs> but that book, lots of people have it in their paint boxes or their paint bags and it's with them all the time. It's a bit of a go-to book. The brushes I've used, again, four brushes, one and a half inch flat, three quarter inch flat, number eight round and my number four rigger. Those are all the brushes I use ever, both for watercolours and acrylics. Those will stand a lot of a lot of abuse. So, and they're not very expensive brushes. Few brushes, few paints. That book, and you've got just about everything you need. The I'm fiddling while I'm talking. The paints I'm using, Aquafine paints. These are De La Rowney Aquafine paints, watercolours. So rich and vibrant, even though, strictly speaking, they're students' quality paint. And these are only £1.80 a tube on my website, so you don't need to spend that much. The sand, Charles Evans sand, that's an artist's quality paint. It's got natural pigment in it, lots of natural pigment. Um, again, lots of use for that paint. So experiment and try with it. Hopefully you've enjoyed this. Everything is on my website, charlesevansart.com. So have a look and enjoy your painting. Thank you very much.